Yeah, that's the internet wire. Uh, so blew out the internet wire. Things are going great. Just trenching over to the box barn, trying to get some power over there. Who am I to say extension cords aren't a good system? But at some point, it'd be nice to just have a little more juice out there. Those internet guys showed up quick. All right, so they showed up in like two minutes after that thing got cut and they're just laying like a temporary. So now we're gonna have like temporary wires everywhere and stuff. Internet guys came and gave us a new cable. They haven't buried yet or anything. Melissa's getting the conduit. How's that conduit working out? And now last time we did this, we laid all the conduit, fished the wire through, and pulled the wire. I was told there were different solvents. <laughs> This time, we're actually just pulling the conduit down the wire, or Melissa is, and we're gonna fix it up in place. That fishing just kinda sucks, so this might be just a tad easier. I'm sure it's like a worse method in some ways, but just what we're doing. Is this like a pickle jar moment? I just can't get it. Oh, oh my oh. god. See that? Pickle jar. I loosened it for you. <laughs> <laughs> it's good to have a lot of dirt and stuff on there. I've always thought, you know, mm -hmm. a little filth. I told Melissa about this YouTube video I saw where this guy got caved in on and died in the trench. Tell him how deep the trench was. <laughs> Go ahead. Okay, but the trench I saw where the guy died, it was like 12, 15 feet down and cave in happened. It was gnarly. All right, you've seen the power trench. I'm just about to start filling that in, but I didn't quite show you this other one. Yeah, we got a trench over here too. This is not power. This is actually hot water. We're putting in one of those outdoor wood burner things. It's mainly focused on heating the house, hence the mega trench. But I also trenched it over here to the barn and that's gonna run in somewhere over here with hot water to, I guess, provide heat. I've never really heard of anyone heating a barn that way, but I'm sure people do it. Uh, this is all uh, gravel for the interior of the structure. Got to just do layers and try to get that up for concrete, maybe at some point. Now 
I know there are a lot of guys who can like floss their cousin's front teeth with a skid steer, but I'm not really one of those guys. It's just kind of a small space for me with this big machine. So I'm just doing like a rough pour, spread the stuff around. I've been compacting, spreading, compacting, spreading, and trying to raise it up a little bit. All right, this uh, level, the floor business, I think I'm done. It's not pro. I'm just saying, I'm sure a pro, someone who's done this a million times would really get this pancake flat, but it's pretty dang close. I've got a few spots that, yeah, they might be like half inch or an inch higher low, but overall, I think it all evens out. The concrete dude, who by the way, his name is King. So the King wanted a little bit of a taper. So that's why those two uh, piers, you can see them. He wanted to taper down to the door. So the full slab is going to be about four inches and he wanted to come down to about eight. I'm somewhere in the eight range, just right in there. I think he just wanted to beefify it. So it didn't, you know, crack at the, at the mouth of the entry. All right. So it's been dirty dirt work in this video. And, uh, one more thing, it's got to happen. I got to put down a little bit of metal mesh, you know, just a little reinforcement for the concrete and Maybe a few other little things, but we're getting there. It's an absolute miracle that this stuff made it back. It was just barely sort of strapped and tied on there. I've also got these uh, bolsters, these dudes. And Melissa has volunteered to do the math. She's good with math. Do the math on where all the bolsters go and the spacing and stuff. This whole video is kind of like a sequence, one after the other, of putting money in the ground. You're just kind of burying it. Bury your wire, bury your conduit. In this case, bury your little steel bolsters. All right, next chunk of change that's going to be just buried and lost forever are these expansion joints. This 
consists of just kind of going up against a container just to allow the concrete to, you know, squish and do what it does. Next chunk of change that's got to get buried is this stuff. And I'm just gonna mix up the pattern. So these guys are going the long way. They're five by 10. And I'll just run this strip this way and the next one this way, just so the seams are all, aren't all in the same place. With that, I think we're prepped for the pour. It's not gonna be for a couple days and I still gotta do just a little bit of tuning up. I think I'll dump some gravel on this side and potentially work in the next couple days before the concrete shows up just to close things off. That'll take like a little window framing and some more stuff. There's always more stuff. In the meantime, let me just note, this right here, it's not necessarily a how-to video. It's just a story of how I did it. I've just been getting all kinds of cool feedback and comments and stuff from people watching this build series. In the next video, concrete.